Some of y'all might remember my Project CJ64, a custom mechanical keyboard and mainboard enclosure built around the Framework 13 mainboard. I did a full three-part series on it, covering everything from the design and initial prototyping to the final project. It was a really cool project and we got a lot of love from the community, but let's be real, the custom machined aluminum enclosure alone came with an $800 price tag and that's just for the enclosure. Add the cost of the keyboard components and the framework mainboard itself, and you're looking at a serious investment. While it's a unique one-of-a-kind piece, it's not exactly a practical solution for housing your spare mainboard after upgrading your framework 13. But that got me thinking, how could I make this concept more accessible? So I redesigned it as a 3D printable version. And of course, I printed a whole bunch of them to share with y'all. Stick around to learn how you can get your hands on one and let's dive into the design, the build process, and how we're turning this into a sleek, compact desktop PC with a nod to retro style. It's the money. First thing first, you'll need to print your own CJ64. I've uploaded the STL files to printables and you'll find a link to a complete video guide that covers everything you need to know, material considerations, print settings, and post-processing. The guide also walks you through the parts list, where and how to install threaded inserts, the power button, and your Wi-Fi options. By the end of it, you'll have everything prepared to this state and ready to build your own CJ64. Now, let's take a look at the components we're using to build this unique tiny PC. Of course, the star of the show is a spare Framework 13 mainboard. I've got several on hand, but for this build, I'm using Framework's first gen i5 1135G7 mainboard. That's probably the one most people will have upgraded from by now. To be fair, these 11th gen processors weren't exactly the best mobile CPUs. They're inefficient, they tend to run hot, which requires a loud cooler, but for a simple low power desktop PC, it'll work just fine. I'll be adjusting the TDP to keep this quad core eight thread CPU running cooler and quieter while still delivering plenty of performance for everyday tasks. For memory, I'm keeping things budget friendly with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 so dim memory and for storage i'm using a 500 gigabyte crucial p3 ssd you can definitely go bigger with both ram and storage but i'm keeping the cost under 70 dollars for wi-fi i'm using an intel ax210 adapter paired with an internal antenna the antenna comes with some pretty long wire so i trim the excess and resoldered them alternatively you can just tape down the extra wires as there's plenty of room below the board i ran the wires under the board and secured them in place with some tape Installing the mainboard is simple. Drop it into place, use three expansion cards to make sure everything is properly aligned. If needed, you can add fiber washers to fine tune the vertical alignment. Once that's done, secure it with standard motherboard screws. And that's it for the mainboard assembly. Now, let's build a keyboard. The theme of the build is stealth. Not in the stealth black sense, but more like quiet and unassuming. Think subtle instead of shadowy from Tuning the CPU to selecting key switches, keycaps, and the overall setup, everything is designed to play into this vibe. For the keyboard PCB, I'm using the BMP60 Poker Hot Swap 60% PCB from KB Republic in a 61 key layout. If you prefer, you can opt for a 64 key layout with directional arrows like I did on the full aluminum version. Honestly, most 60% keyboards should fit in this enclosure, but I've only tested three so far, so your mileage may vary. For the key switches, I'm going with Duroc Silent T1 Tactiles. They're buttery smooth, satisfyingly tactile, and most importantly, whisper quiet. The PCB sits under a black anodized aluminum GK61 positioning tray, which I've already equipped with Duroc V3 stabilizers. To dampen sound even more, I'll be inserting a foam insert between the PCB and tray, plus a little polyester fill under the PCB to minimize the acoustics in this 3D printed enclosure. And now the keycaps. What screams quiet more than Noctua? Okay, maybe screams isn't the right word, but you get the idea. I'm using the MT3 Noctua keycap set from Drop. Not only does it fit the quiet, unassuming theme perfectly, but the beige and brown colorway also plays homage to the inspiration behind Project CJ64, the iconic Commodore 64. That's how I justified the price of this 
keycap set, at least in my mind. Now that the keyboard is built, it's time to wrap up the final assembly. Let's start with the power button situation. For this build, I planned on using a community created power shim that allows a momentary button to connect directly to the main board. It's a simple and elegant solution. Unfortunately, it seems the creator is no longer selling them on Tindy. So since you can't get your hands on one, I'll be skipping using it. But don't worry, I've got backup options. Under the tray cover, there's a tiny hole that lets you activate the main board's built-in power button using, well, something like a blunted toothpick. It's a bit crude, but surprisingly effective, and hey, it's still better than the Mac Mini's power button, right? Another option is to configure the UEFI to power on when it detects power. Pair this with an inline USB-C switch, and you're good to go. A quick note on the different versions of the tray and enclosure. Version one of the keyboard tray doesn't include a rear mounting hole for an external power button, while version two does. Both versions include the small hole to access the main board's power button. Version one of the main board enclosure doesn't have a cutout for the left side 3.5 millimeter headset jack for the optional audio board, but version two does. So to sum it up, version one, no extra holes, version two, holes. Either way, you've got options to make it work. All right, let's connect the keyboard to the main board. For this, I'm using an ADT Link USB C cable. Originally, I planned to create a custom cable with two of the horizontal left turn male USB C connectors, since that specific version isn't commercially available, but to keep things simple and accessible for everyone, I'm just using a left turn to straight cable paired with a 90 degree USB-C adapter on the keyboard. Now, six 2.5 by 12 millimeter screws to screw the top to the bottom. And the last step, attach a couple of these peel and stick silicone bumpers as feet to lift the case and to provide ventilation. And finally, I'll close it up with the magnetically attached cover plate. And that's it guys, pretty straightforward, right? While I did do some soldering for my build, I designed this project so you can put together the entire keyboard PC without needing to solder anything. For this version, I stuck with the raw printed enclosure, but if you want to take it up a notch, post-processing PETG is pretty simple. A bit of sanding, a couple of coats of filler primer with sanding in between, and a few layers of rattle can paint can transform this into something that looks professionally manufactured. As a matter of fact, and now that I got it together, I'm not completely 100% happy with the look of the black with the Noctua keycap set. So I've actually printed a tan version, which I'm going to match completely to this probably brown color for the outside to make it a more cohesive looking unit. Now, one last note, there are two versions of the plate cover Version one is plain and version two includes branding. I considered making a version with the framework logo, but well, copyright laws are a thing. So anyway, let's get the CJ64 set up and running. As I mentioned earlier, I planned on going with a single cable setup using a Thunderbolt 4 hub. This worked great at first, but once I updated the drivers, including the Thunderbolt driver, the HDMI output stopped working. Luckily, I built three expansion bays into the CJ64, so I removed the storage and micro SD card reader expansion cards I planned on using and installed an HDMI and USB-A card to be able to complete the setup which includes a 32 inch 1440p 144 hertz display, a photo arc ergonomic vertical mouse, and a Bose SoundLink Flex, 
And that's it, a simple, clean, stealthy setup. There's no need for a PC tower here because, well, the keyboard is the PC. I was able to fit a whole additional setup on the small edge of my desk where I used to keep a 3D printer. Now, you most definitely noticed I made a significant change to the keyboard and replaced the keycaps. The Noctua colorway just clashed with the black keyboard and I couldn't keep that on camera. A couple of days have actually gone by because I ordered some brown PETG and printed a whole new enclosure, but the brown was just way off and actually looked like. So I scavenged some keycaps off two different keyboards and did the best I could, but I definitely designed this keyboard to use the MT3 profile keycaps. So I'll be on the lookout for a nice set. My son suggested a black on white, which is probably what I'll go with. During the setup, I made some power adjustments. The UEFI is limited, but I turned off max turbo boost to avoid the CPU hitting its 64 watt peak and adjusted the Windows power mode to best efficiency. Yes, I said Windows, but I also paired this setup with what I think is the best Linux spin for this keyboard PC. Be sure to check that video out on my Linux focus channel, Lifting Linux. Link in the description below. But these power settings allow the i5 1135G7 to run a bit cooler and quieter, which is critical since the main board is now encased in a 3D printed plastic shell. And that's what I personally love most about the framework ecosystem. I upgraded my ultra portable laptop and then repurposed the old main board to create an entirely new and unique PC setup. It's perfect for anyone who needs a simple home office or productivity machine. It's like a really cool custom mini PC. And if I want to boost performance, I can always swap in my higher end main boards like my Ryzen 7040 series. For those higher power builds, I also have a completely heat resistant CJ64 enclosure that I had printing using a tough structural resin from PCBWay. Now, not a sponsor or an endorsement. They just gave me the best quote with the fastest turnaround. It cost only $50 and the print was done quickly in a durable resin that won't shatter. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, but still want your own keyboard enclosure for your spare framework mainboard, you can download the STL files from printables and upload them to one of the many online printing services. Some of these servers even offer the option to install the threaded inserts and other hardware for you, making the process that much easier. Now, while testing different filaments, I ended up printing up a lot of these enclosures and I'm still cranking out about two a day on my Neptune 4, so I'll be giving them all away. To be eligible, here's what you need to know. I'm only sending out the printed enclosure. You'll need the skills and equipment to install the threaded inserts and magnets yourself. Unfortunately, I just don't have enough of those on hand for all of these enclosures. Oh, and you'll also need to purchase and build the keyboard. Two, you'll need a framework mainboard to install in the closure. This is meant for people who already have one ready to go. And three, you gotta live somewhere with a reasonable shipping cost. I'll ship these worldwide as long as the cost isn't too extreme. Remember, I don't have any sponsors. I don't do ad reads or paid promotional videos, and I'm not here to push some cheap t-shirt merch on you. I just make videos about things I think are cool and want to share with the community. As a thank you for showing up, watching, and supporting the channel, I'm handing out some CJ64 enclosures. So if you meet those conditions, here's how to enter. Just drop a comment below telling me which version of the framework mainboard you plan to use and what your use case is for it. That's it. For every 100 likes this video gets, I'll pick someone and send them an enclosure until I run out. Good luck, and I can't wait to see what y'all create with these. Now, if you don't snag one of these enclosures, don't worry, the model is available on printables, and even if you don't own a 3D printer, there are a ton of options to get it printed in just about any material you want, so check out the links below to get started. While you're at it, make sure to smash that like button, and if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more awesome projects like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.